the Earth is in desperate times as the human population is increasing while the resources are depleting at an increasingly rapid rate. Today our environment is under siege. We need to take it back. This is a serious concern whether our children or grandchildren are going to be able to enjoy the Earth's delectable beauty that is uh, present today. Waste is a huge problem and it will eventually permanently harm future generations if not managed. I hope to persuade the audience by first clarifying the current issues, <coughs> second by illustrating our current actions and uh, how it can only lead to a trashy future, and third to entice the audience to be more aware of their ecological footprint and their waste. <laughs> Everyday examples would be just basically recycling whatever you think can be reused in the future. Obviously, if it's a soil napkin, you're not going to be able to reuse that, but no cards, anything just on your day-to-day -day basis can usually just put in a different bin. There are some major issues in today's recycling and conservation habits. Water is a huge issue, especially in this dry, arid land of Southern California. And Millers points out in his book titled Water that the water crisis is a management problem. It's a matter of allocation and distribution, as well as a problem of actual supply. More of a supply here issue, but everywhere else, the di distribution, the fights over the water, is really difficult. Trash has also been overwhelmingly increasing over the past few decades. As Strasser states in her book titled Waste and Want, that per people throw away perfectly good things. We decide we just no longer want something and consider it rubbish. Instead of discarding, we need to just reallocate. <coughs> Nothing is inherently trash. Trash is only made by sorting. Another main issue today is that society depends mainly on non-renewable fossil fuels. America needs to wean off of the non-renewable fossil fuels and jump onto the sustainable that environment. It's basically just laziness or ignorance, not even knowing that there's a problem to address. Recycling water as well as trash is important. Our land states in his book titled Unquenchable.LA acts as if they have an abundant water source, which is obviously not the case. The city reclaims in the year 1% of all of water. LA should take a bigger responsibility and make it a larger impact. Although the consumption is down, they need to reclaim a lot more of that water. Currently, in our nation, our government also states out that a uh, few of the cities have developed an aggressive conservation and recycling programs, um, or in our area, Long Beach, LA, Riverside County, and San Bernardino. They've dropped their gallons from over 300 a day to 121 gallons per day, up to just 253. So anything helps. Massive weight accumulation produces landfills. Landfills have many obvious negative qualities, as well as obvious ones. Obvious ones mean uh, smell, waste of land. This board here, as you can see, a major part of the landfill is just paper. Purple section. Plastic is in the blue. Organics, which can be completely non even recyclable, just biodegradable. That is a major percentage of what's in the landfills today. As you can see, all of that, you can make a difference. There's unobvious uh, serious effects as well, like uh, when you discard batteries or electronic devices. When it rains, it basically produces a contaminated liquid that eventually percolates down into our underlying groundwater system. Pollution, which is therefore um, making our water more Grossman writes in her book High Tech Trash that some changes in manufacturing, design, and disposal will reduce the environmental impact, but still some changes need to be made so that they're completely recyclable. There are many solutions to these harmful and wasteful habits that we have on Earth. G. Powell states in his book, Death Biodiesel, that there are hundreds of plants producing oils that can be just used in our engines with no alterations as of today that would totally <coughs> completely replace gasoline. Such common producing oil plants are coconut, corn, coconut, sunflower, hemp, and used cooking oils, which used cooking oils actually usually end up in the landfills as well. Therefore, also, you know, adding to that. In regards to physical waste, such as water bottles, H. Rogers states in a book titled Gone Tomorrow that refillable plants, bottling plants, is a solution, create jobs and will um, reduce packaging wastes. Kelly, in her book titled Garbage, mentions that glass salt and uh, 
tire top driveways may come into play, grinding up the glass so that it becomes a solid completely uh, just as, as if our asphalt is now. They're doing tests to make sure that um, the screeching of your tires on top of the asphalt won't actually pop your tires and it's all coming along very well. Reuse recycling and reducing our solid waste back down into component parts is the key. <coughs> Fossil fuels that are non-renewable can be yes, uh, can be useless and recycled. And Jaker states in her book titled Sustainable Fossil Fuels that dramatic conservation of fossil fuels should begin immediately as we don't know how important they're going to be to our future generations. Electronic waste must be recycled properly to prevent water pollution. Americans nowadays seem too lazy to make the extra effort. As E. Grossman points out in High Tech Trash, simply creating a new set of curbside bins will not solve the issue. We need to just make these products more life extensive and with less toxins to make them easier to recycle. Today our environment is under siege. We need to take it back. Our children and our grandchildren and our future generations need to be able to enjoy this world the, the way it is supposed to be. It's a delectable beauty that we need to embrace and we need to try to make our simple, minimal steps to solve this issue. These consequences are irreversible and we need to act now. Thank you.